Welcome to Affinity Fans and thank you for watching. Today I've got a real treat for you. I'm going to give you a peek at the Definity test network that we use to play with our blockchain computer technology. This applies new cryptography to create a public blockchain that is extraordinarily fast and more secure than anything around today. This of course is the foundation for the Definity world computer. This is a virtual computer that's created by an open network that can increase its capacity on demand that we hope will host much of the world's business logic and data. The Definity computer is unstoppable and tamper-proof and makes it possible to create business systems that are much more secure, much more reliable and are highly interoperable, all at a fraction of the cost. Definity will also host general dApps, decentralized finance, decentralized social media systems and large-scale open source businesses that compete with traditional intermediaries such as Uber and eBay. This is the future cloud. With these thoughts in mind, let's get started. So here we are. This is the Definity test network. I'll cycle through the panels quickly to give you a quick overview. Network shows the nodes in the network that are collaborating to create the virtual computer. Uh, there are 500 of them. They're distribu distributed around the world in places like Singapore and London. Uh, currently, we're using Amazon Spot instances uh, to keep the costs down. Um, the recent blocks uh, are, as you'd imagine, the blocks being produced by the network. They're coming out at a furious rate. Uh, test networks uh, exceeded two and a half million blocks at this time. Random Beacon is the random number being produced by the current group that is used to select the next group and is also used to drive all of the protocols we use. So there's this thing called Threshold Relay that is absolutely fundamental to all of the Definity protocols and it produces um, the world's first unstoppable, unmanipulable, unpredictable randomness without any trusted parties. And we use this very special sequence of random numbers to drive all of our protocols. So you could really um, say that, you know, Definity in, involves uh, lots of theories about how random numbers are applied. Block height uh, gives you the current block height and the time taken to create the current uh, block. Latency chart, you know, graphs that out. So you can see that blocks are coming out every half second uh, on this test network. Now, this is the... Uh, this is where it gets really interesting. So, Definity in normal operation produces finality in two blocks. Okay, so that means we're reaching finality. You know, new computations are finalized in one second. Now, to put that in perspective, uh, Bitcoin requires six blocks, and the block time is ten minutes. So, in expectation, it finalizes transactions in sixty minutes. Can take a bit longer. Can take less. Ethereum requires seven, thirty-seven blocks, you know, block time is about 15 seconds, so that works out as 10 minutes or 600 seconds to finalize computations. That is when you, you know, say for example you're running a financial exchange on Ethereum and you submit a, an order and, you know, you think it's executed, you've got to wait 10 minutes before you can be sure, sure the network hasn't reorganized and that that trade has really gone through. Um, on Definity, we're producing finality in a second on this test network. We'll detune it for the, the production network, but you know this is running 600 times faster than Ethereum is today. So let's get back to the network and some of the really exciting uh, things about that. Uh, the green dots show you the current group that is collaborating to produce the current block and also select create a random number that selects the next group. The fat green dot is the um, individual node that is in fact acted as a leader and, and proposed a block that's been accepted by the group, which has then notarized it. So let's uh, click on one of these, uh, whoops, I'll try and click on one of these, they're coming out so fast, whoops, here we go. <laughs> um, okay, so we've clicked on one of these blocks um, flying past and let's go through the, the fields. Block height needs no explanation. The test network's produced just over two and a half million blocks. Uh, beacon, 
That's the random number produced by the previous group that selected the current group and placed a priority order on all the nodes in the network that might want to um, be the leader uh, and, and propose a block. Notarization is a threshold signature created by the group on the block. And notarization is absolutely essential to this thing called probabilistic slot consensus. It is um, a process by which we drive much faster consistency and also remove problems like selfish mining and nothing at stake. Time span, time stamp needs no explanation. Minter, this just means that if you took all of the nodes in the network, uh, ordered them lexicographically by the public keys, uh, it was node 194 that acted as the leader to produce the block that group 99 accepted and notarized. So we can look at the group members here. There's only 100 uh, members in each group. Um, the reason for that is um, uh, we um, only have 500 nodes in, in the network. It wouldn't make sense to run, a, run larger groups, but in the production network, group size will be 400. Okay, let's flick across to contracts. Um, Firstly, I just want to say that you, you can't intuit anything from, from this test network about what the production uh, Divinity World Computer will look like and what our IDs are going to look like. Um, this, this stuff's really just been created to allow our engineers to play around. Having said that, you know, we've got a fully functional virtual machine and our smart, the smart contracts um, uh, are written in a cut-down version of the Haskell language. Uh, in the production Divinity network, um, we won't have simple smart contracts, we'll have actors, and you'll be able to write these actors using any language you like. You know, we'll have Java-like languages, Solidity, um, and functional languages. Okay, so let's do something simple to begin. Um, there's a system contract called status that, re that records a status for uh, every user interacting with the system. So at the moment it's just us. Let's go to the status contract. Uh, you can see um, it's recording Dom was here as my status, okay? If you're interested in the code of that system contract, uh, there it is. You can see there's a write method you can use to set the status. Uh, this thing uses a thing called, uh, we use a thing called capability-based security. And this is, you know, the, the status identifier is unsealed, and this is how, you know, um, it's my particular uh, status that's set, okay? Anyway, let's go back to the, the state and let's change it. So I'm going to create a transaction that does just that. So instead of hello world, I'll say, uh, this is a demo. I'm gonna press the deploy contract button. This isn't a contract, although I'm pressing deploy contract because it doesn't define any methods. It's just a transient transaction. So anyway, let's deploy that. And you can see almost immediately um, the status in the system status contract has been updated. Very cool. Um, let's go and look at daemon contracts. So, you know, the Definity philosophy is that, you know, Definity may be based on blockchain technology and all kinds of other uh, crazy cryptography, but, you know, developers don't really want to um, uh, be involved or limited by the machinations of complex network protocols. They just want a simple virtual computer they can upload their software to um, and that will run as they expect. Now, uh, one of the things that developers uh, often want to create are long running processes that we often call daemons. And this um, contract here implements a daemon. It will um, run until it's either run out of gas or in fact, uh, it produces, it's, it's producing a series of numbers and if once it's reached the number one, it stops. So this thing's gonna run until uh, it, it runs out of gas or it reaches the number one. So let's deploy that. Okay, so let's go up here and have a look at its state. And you can see that it's continually updating this number and um, it's gonna continue doing that until it's run out of gas or um, uh, it reaches the number one. It looks like it's run out of gas. So why don't I do this again with some more gas? That was rather annoying. Okay, deploy. Okay, so look at this one. Oops. Now, I gave this one a whole load more gas. So this process should um, continue running until it 
gets the number one. You can see it's still going, still going, still going, still going, still going, come on. <laughs> still going. Yay, it's reached the number one and it's stopped. Okay, last thing I want to show you. Um, here's a contract that defines an interface that um, creates a DAP that allows you to interact with other contracts. Um, obviously this contract would be created by a WYSIWYG designer or something like that. Anyways, let's uh, deploy this. There we go. Uh, copy its address. You can see by the way in the contract state viewer what the contract code has produced. And now we've copied the address. Let's type that into the, the DAP browser. And boom, there you go. The DAP has come straight off the well computer system. Uh, we think this is a great model. Um, you know, people don't need to do this to create DAPs, but you know, since the capacity of the Definity computer can increase um, with demand, uh, we expect that people will want to use it to you know, store complete applications and all sorts of data. Of course, um, the great advantage of storing your complete DAP uh, in contracts is that it's tamper-proof. You know, if you have a DAP that's created using Truffle or something like that and is served by, a, you know, from a web server, if an attacker gets, takes control of that web server, you know, they might be able to do all kinds of naughty things. Uh, with this system, you know, everything's tamper proof and the level of security is uh, greatly um, increased. Okay, uh, that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed this uh, quick peek at the Definity Testnet. All right, thanks. Bye.